One issue we haven't looked at yet, um, a problem that you might uh, encounter pretty soon, uh, is the timing between certain events in Max. Um, it's really important to keep in mind that message ordering um, can actually cause a lot of issues uh, now that you're doing slightly more advanced projects. Um, so I recommend taking a look at tutorial 5. Tutorial 5. Message ordering. Um, generally, what you need to remember is that messages go from right to left. Um, so, for example, if we had a single button or a MIDI keyboard or whatever uh, triggering something, if we had that button triggering a few other things, let's connect to this. The buttons right now are just stand-ins for whatever this might be. These could be note messages, it could be a synthesizer, whatever you want. Uh, and I will print each of these. A different label so you can be clear which one's which. Uh, we are going to print left, center, and right. So looking at the max window over here, if I were to just click on this, obviously you see right, a bang, center, and left. Again, this is just to identify which print object um, we're, we're uh, looking at here in the Max console. Now, if you whatever your uh, input device is is being used to trigger multiple things, the order of these messages will always be from right to left. So take a look right here. This one went first, then the center, then the left. Might not seem like a big deal, but it can actually cause a lot of hiccups later. Um, if I were to move this one over here, just to confuse things a little bit more, let me get rid of the patch cords here. So we move the left one to the right. Let me clear this window. You'll see right here now that one is first, then the middle, and then that one. Now, of course, that'll just cause a lot of confusion. But the point here is just to keep in mind that uh, when one message or one bang or one piece of information is going to multiple places, it'll always go from right to left. Um, I think it always goes from, is it bottom to top or top to bottom? I don't really remember. These have to be really perfectly aligned to test. Right, and this was, I think it's bottom to top as well. Uh, anyway, the tutorial will, will indicate all the little details, but this is something you have to be really aware of. The order of messages, uh, especially the order of bangs, is really important. Um, one object that will be really useful uh, for controlling the order of how messages uh, integers, floats, bangs, or sent is the trigger object. Uh, I recommend you take a little bit of time and, and explore it, get to know it, but it sends one input in to many different locations. It doesn't matter what the input is, it can either send that same input to a different location or it can send a bang, a float, an integer, a symbol, a li uh, I guess it's a list, I'm not sure what uh, L is, uh, but the trigger object can be is really really powerful. So for example, Let's say we have something that's sending a bang. Doesn't matter what that is. Okay. And we want to send that bang to different locations. When this receives a bang, it will send a bang first out of here, then out of here, and then out of here. So we can very specifically control which one we want to print first, or which one we want to occur first, second, uh, and third. And this is because, it doesn't matter now actually, if I were to 
uh, bang this, you see it's one, two, three. And now it actually doesn't matter what order, where these are going. Uh, it doesn't matter how they're spaced in the max patch. It's going to be sent right to left based on the outlets of the trigger object. So this one will be first, this one will be second, and this one will be third. Always. Okay. So this, uh, the trigger object is a really good way of controlling, very precisely controlling the order in which messages are sent, regardless of where those messages or the objects are positioned in your max patch. Otherwise, it'll be left up to the, uh, the way they're spaced out in max. Okay. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that the trigger object can be used to send, um, it, first of all, it can be shortened to T. You don't have to write the full trigger thing. Uh, the bangs can be shortened to B. So this is the same as this, the exact same thing. Uh, but you can also use it to use, you can use a trigger object to have, for example, a bang or a button send different kinds of information. So let's say we want this button to uh, first send a bang, Uh, and then we want it to, uh, let's write it out first. Let's say first we need a bang. Then we need the number one to play, like a playlist object or something. Uh, and then we need uh, another bang, let's say. So remembering that it's right to left, we want the rightmost argument to be bang. We want the middle argument to be a one. And we want the leftmost argument to be a bang. This means that when this receives something, anything. It'll send a bang out of here. It'll send a one out of here. And then it'll send a bang out of here. Uh, and just to demonstrate, I'll connect these print objects again. Uh, so first it'll send a bang. Uh, let's keep these. Um, Let's keep these in order, just to not confuse everything. Uh, this will be two. This will be the first one. And this will be the third one. So we'll send a bang on one and then a bang. Uh, you can have it send a two if you want, if you want it to trigger the second object in a, a second uh, Uh, sample in a playlist object, doesn't matter. The nice thing is you can create uh, any argument that you want here. Um, now, let's say that the trigger object is receiving an integer instead of a bang. The same thing will happen. The integer can be used to trigger bang, a two, and a bang. Regardless of what that integer is, every time it receives an integer, every time it receives anything, you can send out a message that says, hello and it'll do the same thing so regardless of what the input is these arguments will always output the same thing in order of left to right now if you wanted to uh, also let's say send out the number that it's receiving the integer you can give it the argument of i which stands for integer and then over here let's give this a zero uh, it will send first the uh, integer that it receives. So in this case, it'll be, let's say, a number five, then a bang, then the number two, which is the argument we've given it here, uh, and then a bang. Okay, so it's a really versatile object. And if you want to change that inter, uh, integer to a float, you change that to an F, and you can see right here, its output, uh, let me just clear this and do that again. It outputs a three as a float. It just converts the integer to a float. It outputs a bang, second argument here. It outputs a two, which is this argument. And then it outputs a bang. Uh, this might not seem that important right now, but I can assure you that this trigger object and understanding the uh, order of, of how messages are sent out in Max is gonna be really, uh, really important. Um, so we, we've, saw, we've seen that the trigger object can send bangs, it can send 
preset integers or floats. This can be uh, uh, whatever number you want. Right, it sends the number, the integer that we give it. Number 12, bang, this argument, 2.443, and then a bang. These can be anything. Uh, they can also be uh, symbols. Let's do a print negative one here. Start going deeper into the order. Uh, so if you were to send it, for example, this message that says hello, Max thinks of that as a symbol. Uh, so it sends that message. It sends a float. It didn't receive any floats right there. It didn't receive anything, so it just sends a zero. Uh, it sends a bang, and this number, and then a bang. So the, it gets to know this object. It's really useful, really important. Um, when in doubt, again, look at the help file for the trigger object. Uh, you can see here, oh, nice, we got some examples. Um, you can use it to run simple calculations, find the difference between incoming values. That's pretty good. Uh, it's really, really powerful, really versatile object. Uh, and then the other thing I would recommend is go to the help files. Tutorial 5, if you obviously can't find this, go to home. And you can just search here, message order. Here are all objects related to the search. Uh, click on documentation. Um, and controlling max, no, that's not it. Message order, there we go. Tutorial 5. Message order and debugging. Open the tutorial. This is a really good, very, very good explanation. Uh, much more in-depth than, than what I've just done. Uh, but really get to know this. This is a very, very important feature of Max that, you know, it isn't terribly exciting, but it's going to make your life a lot easier down the road when you understand the logic behind all these things.